Well, it, the story really starts back when I turned um, eight, and right around that same time, I'd started being sexually abused by a neighbor. And I remember being really confused because I knew that what was happening to me sexually shouldn't be, yet it was, and I didn't know who, where, when, what, you know, who do I tell, how do I stop it? And, and really that's where my, my separation from people, from God, from, from everything kind of began. And I just turned inward and, and kept quiet and, and hated myself, um, hated what was happening. And you know, with, with my suicide attempt, it really was, was kind of the culmination of a perfect storm. You know, shortly thereafter, I was diagnosed with scoliosis and underwent my very first back surgery which meant I was introduced to, to opiate medication and for the first time, you know, felt, felt a sense of relief, uh, not only from the physical pain, but from the emotional pain. And shortly thereafter, my mom and dad got a divorce and then there was all sorts of confusion kind of coming in. So my, my attempt happened around the age of 12, uh, my first one, and it was just a matter of me wanting desperately to get away from all of the things that were hurting and not knowing how to do it. Um, my attempt was serious enough that it required um, medical attention first, and after the medical attention I was transferred to a psychiatric facility. It was the, the first time being hospitalized that I was able to finally tell the secret and let people know what had really been going on and start that conversation and being able to talk you know, about what had led up to, to me wanting to end my own life. I had a psychologist that I had seen prior to that I still see to this day. However, when I got out, um, I, I quickly became engulfed in another means of, of coping, and, and that was drugs and alcohol. And drugs and alcohol became my solution for the next 25 years. My, my parents, you know, bless their hearts, didn't really know what to do with, with the, the trauma that I'd experienced. And so I was told just to forget about it and move on and not talk about it. And unfortunately, that, that doesn't work. And, you know, my drug and alcohol addiction led me into lots of other places where that similar trauma was repeated. It wasn't the last time I thought about suicide or the last time I attempted. Um, those, those were thoughts and feelings I carried with me for the next, you know, 25 years. But an event would take place in my life that really would kind of start that, that journey for me where things started to change. My, my dad, my dad who, who also struggled with the similar things that I did, depression and, and drug addiction, uh, he, he died by suicide um, October 5th of 2002 and I, I was the one that found him. Um, the one that found him and that was an experience too for me was, was, was difficult but very bittersweet because my dad had also found me multiple times that same way and I was just grateful it was his daughter, it wasn't a stranger, it wasn't a person that didn't care about him and I got to be there in that final moment and, and it was also a turning point for me because it, it really put into perspective what I was dealing with and, and, and I had kids and I know that I didn't want to inflict that kind of pain upon my own children and so it really helped me to start looking inside and, and what could I do and, and how did I, how did we get here and how do we help other families not get here? And so, you know, I sat at my computer one night and came across a website uh, called AFSP and it's the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention and instantly began reading and learning more about suicide. I knew, I knew from my own experience why and what it took to get people to that point, but I wanted to be able to have answers to explain to others because of course in our family we heard lots of horrible comments, you know, how selfish our dad was, what a coward he was, and how could he do that to us, and so I wanted to be able to have information for people to understand that this was not him being morally weak. This was not him being a coward. This was truly what he believed was the only way he could spare us from any more hurt and pain. And it was the only way he could get away from his own demons and hurt and pain. And so, you know, one of the things that I, I think about all the time, and I, I want to share this just because I think it's so vital to change the conversation you just spoke of. You know, I think back to 9-11. Uh, we as a country watched, you know, absolute horror unfold on our TV sets, but what we also witnessed was, was such a profound lesson if we would have learned it. And that's when the, the tower started to fall and burn, and we watched the people from the top start to jump. 
You know, by def definition, they died by suicide, and none of us sat on our couch in judgment and said, oh, how dare you, how selfish of you, you coward. And if we think about why, it's because they didn't jump because they wanted to die any more than I really wanted to die when I had my suicide attempt. I just wanted to get away from the pain and the hurt that I didn't know how to fix. And, and that's where they were at. Our thinking isn't rational in those moments. That's why we need to be able to reach out to somebody and say, hey, like, this is where my brain is at. This is what it's telling me. You know, please help me not to do this and, and let me have that conversation with you in a way that, that you don't judge me or shame me because that's how I feel. For so many years, I was unwilling to be honest um, with myself. I, I could not look at myself in the mirror and, and face myself with all of the things I had done. I kept so many secrets. I mean, to anyone on the outside, they would have said, no, Taryn's doing okay, because I mean, I held a job, I had kids, you know, I mean, on, on the surface, I, I looked okay, but it was that, you know, in the dark of the night when no one was around, you know, that's, that's who I ran from. That's why I drank every night, because I couldn't be alone in my own skin, let alone my own thoughts. And it was a mess, and so I found my, you know, my bottom came on, on June 23rd, 2013, where You know, I caused great harm to my, my children and, and knew that it was time that, that I get help and that I quit using drugs and alcohol as a means of, of coping. I, I thankfully found a, a recovery program. You know, I, I found a fellowship of, of people that taught me some skills and tools. And I didn't think there were other people out there like me. I, I, I don't know why our brains do that to us, where they have us convinced that we are alone and, and that nobody would understand and nobody would get it, because that's such a lie. You know, as soon as I started opening up, even just a little bit, you know, I found, of course, there were other people who'd been where I'd been and done some of the same things I'd done. And, and in hearing their stories and me being able to share mine, you know, we, we find this common bond where we go, man, I, I'm not the only one. And wow, you did that, I did that too. And wow, you even did it worse than I did, or I did it worse than you did. And, you know, it was where I finally started to see myself as the same versus so completely different, because I wasn't different. You know, we're all human. We're all doing the same thing. We just don't, we just don't talk about it as, as we need to. And, so it took work. It took a lot of work. It took out that willingness, though, for me to finally be able to look inside myself and go, okay, what are you responsible for? What, what did you do? What, 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 what do you have power over? And, and I had to only look at me. I couldn't blame all those other people anymore. I couldn't blame the lady who molested me or the men who raped me. I, I had to look at what did I do and, and where can I have power again, and in owning those things, that's where I began to have that transformation take place in my own mind, where I didn't hate myself as I had hated myself. I began to find forgiveness for myself, and, and that's been the key. For so many years, I believed that lie that, that I wasn't enough, that I would never be enough, and, and I didn't need to be enough for anybody else. I needed to be enough for me. And when I finally found that, that's when everything changed. And, and thankfully have not had a drink or a drug enter my body and, you know, coming up on five years. And that's a, a huge victory for me. This has been an, an amazing year. I mean, so many things took place this last year. I, I graduated from college with my bachelor degree in psychology. I, I got married. I have a husband. I have been a single mom for 20 years. I have a stepson. My kids are grown. My oldest is 22. My youngest is getting ready to graduate. And, you know, to just, I, I have a job today doing what I love, which is in suicide prevention. And, and, and I wish, you know, that's my goal. I wish we could shift that conversation to where this was just an okay thing that we could say. You know, hey, right now, today, man, yeah, I don't think I can go on. You know, I need help and I, I need you just to love me. You don't have to fix it either, but just maybe be here with me as I try to struggle my way through it too.